Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. If you're new to the channel, I am Steve Chapman of Fishing Florida Radio, and today is media day. Here at the 2019 Bassmaster Classic. What is media day? Well, we get the opportunity to talk to the anglers one-on-one. -on -one. They give us a lunch, we have, uh, we get to talk to the anglers after lunch or sit down and eat, have a meal with them before the tournament. Tomorrow is day one of the classic, but check that out. Today's vlog and episode is brought to you by Angle Coolers. Angle Coolers, the first, the best, your last cooler. You know, they make rotomolar coolers, they make soft sided coolers, they make bait aeration coolers, they have it all. So, check them out at anglecoolers.com. Oh, Bobby. The, the Bobby is here with me right now. Bobby! <laughs> Hack it! Hack it! <laughs> What's up, Hammer? How are you, brother? Doing good, man. Doing good. Buddy, Fast Pat Newton. Hey, buddy. What's up, buddy? Hey, now. Hey, hey. I got... <laughs> yeah. Is that a five or a seven? <laughs> that? Seven. That's a seven. You're fancy. All right. <laughs> guy I talk about skipping underneath the boat dock and making me look bad. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing good Steve, how are you? I am very good. good. Uh, you ready for this? I am ready. I've got my tackle done. I'm, I'm ready to roll. How big would it be to win this year? It would be huge. I mean as a professional, you know, a professional angler winning any classic is huge but uh, this one is has lots of extra special meaning being at home. Just everything that's going on this one would be would be incredible. Yeah, especially being home family around, the yeah. kids, the yeah. life. Absolutely. This is a big one. How much practice time did you put out here? I actually came and spent a couple of days before the cutoff, um, rode around a few days, didn't really fish much at all. Um, and then of course our, our four days basically of official practice, I was out there. Not daylight to dark every day, but I was out there most of the day every day and you know, tried to use that time wisely. So I've, I put in like three days before the cutoff and then those four days of official practice. What do you say about this being the last great classic? I'm not going to say it'll be the last great classic, but it, you know, for the majority of the field that's fishing in this one, it will be our last one for the foreseeable future. Uh, I don't claim to have a crystal ball and can see what's going to happen in, in two years, five years, or in the next five minutes. But, uh, but you know, as, the, as far as we can tell, it will be our last one for the foreseeable future. So. The, there'll be more Bassmaster Classics, and they'll, you know, there'll be a winner next March as well. But I'm, this one is extra special, you know, and, and one I certainly want to do well in. It's kind of my last chance. Heaven forbid you don't win. What happens next year? What do you think about working the Classic Expo? I, I <laughs> Will you be here to work the Classic Expo? Expo? I don't know. It's way too early to answer a question <laughs> like that. Is, is what I think. I think it'll be really weird. It could be very weird. Yeah. Great for the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Great for the fans. Yeah. Have you been in practice? Were you on them? I have caught some fish, um, you know, enough to be confident. And, and in a tournament, if you know where you're going to go and, and generally what you're going to throw, to me, that's all you can ask for. And I know where I'm going to fish and I know what I'm going to use. So I don't know anything else that, uh, that I could want. Do you like being the, the odds on favorite out here? Does it put any more pressure on you? I want to win every tournament, whether it's at home or it's anywhere else. You know, I, the, the thing is, I know how fickle this this body of water can be. Yeah. You, know, you can be on one day and and to go out the next day and hardly catch anything. So 
I understand that about this place, so I know even with having caught a few fish in practice, you don't get your hopes too high. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, the show's really rooting for you. Thank you. Ken and I had it out last week over yeah. you. Yeah. Had it out. Yeah. But I think this is this is a good opportunity, and I can't wait to see you up there. I hope holding the, the trophy. Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Brandon Lester, how are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? I am very good. How excited are you about this week? Pretty darn excited, man. I, I'm telling you, I'm not a real flashy guy that jumps up and down and hoots and hollers and all that, but I'm pretty darn excited about this week. To be fishing a Bassmaster Classic, the biggest tournament in bass fishing in my home state, yeah. is a pretty big deal. Does it put any more pressure on you that it's your kind of a local and one of the favorites here? You know, I, I'm not putting any pressure on myself. At least I'm trying not to. I got a lot of friends and family coming and I don't want to suck, obviously, but, uh, but um, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, I, when we get out there on the water, it's, it's fishing, that's what we do. What would it mean to win this classic here? Oh, it'd be huge, it'd be huge. This is my sixth year on the Elite Series, my fourth classic. I understand what this tournament means to a person's career. Yeah. And I, I feel like in my career, I'm the only thing I'm lacking is that defining moment. You know, I, I've been really close to winning a lot of tournaments. Had yeah. A lot of top tens, had a very blessed career thus far. And I'm, I'm happy with it, you know, I'm happy about that. But I feel like I'm lacking that defining moment where everybody knows, hey, that's the guy that won such and such. Yeah. I'm hoping that's here this week. That's the know. guy that won the 2019 <laughs> Classic. Think of that. That sounds pretty good to me, man. That would be unbelievable. I remember when you got it, came on the on on the leaps. We saw you at the first your first classic. Yep. Probably gave you some odd questions that you weren't ready for, but I mean it all works out in the end, I guess, doesn't it? It always works out. Yep. You said life defining or career defining opportunity to win here. That does add a little bit of stress to for you at the same time. I know you're not gonna have, be stressed, be stressed, but when you get out there on the water and maybe things don't aren't working out as well as they normally do. What the hell was that? I ain't got a clue. Uh, do you, does it change up the way you start fishing, or do you do you try to just focus on just what you know has worked here? Yeah, hopefully not. Um, you know, it, it's never a good thing when things start rolling around in your head and you start rushing and hurrying. I just want to be calm, cool, collected, and just let things happen. Just let the day unfold. Let it flow. You know, I, I want to get dialed in during the tournament. I don't want to be dialed in during practice. I don't wanna, I'm not worried about what happened last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I know where I'm going to fish, but it's been changing every day. Okay. So I want to get dialed in during the tournament. And I'm, I feel pretty calm. You know, I'm not, I'm not stressing about it. I uh, hope I'm not stressed in the morning. But like I said, dude, it, it, it's fishing. Is there, some, is there some anxiety on the first day of a tournament like this where you – do you get nervous before you take off? If there's a guy out here that tells you he doesn't have butterflies on day one of the Bassmaster class, you better check his pulse. <laughs> you better. I'm telling you right now, he ain't alive. But yeah, this is what we live for, man. I mean, it's a big opportunity. We all know what this opportunity means. So that's why you're going to get some butterflies. I don't care who you are. Do you think, you think you're going to have a crowd following you tomorrow? And how does that affect your fishing? It's possible I will. Uh, the way I'm fishing, I, I think I'm, you know, I'm gonna be running some pockets and stuff like that. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm as long as they kind of stay behind me, everything, everything's good. And I mean, we we can work with that. I, yeah, I've dealt with spectators before, so. As long as you keep an open line of communication and, yes. and know where everybody's going, everything works out fine. Excellent. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. I Thank hope you. to see you up there uh, Sunday. I hope It'd so. be wonderful. Yep. It'd be, it'd be life changing. It would. Absolutely it would. Brandon Lester. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Bobby Lane Jr. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I really am. Uh, anytime you're at a, an event like this with the magnitude of um, exposure this thing holds and uh, just being able to share it with my brother it's uh it's it's not a lot of pressure it's just fun to be here what would in your career you've had a ama amazing career but host hoisting that trophy over your head how big would that be for you you know i was in there earlier when we did our uh, walk through in the in the stadium and watched the gentlemen that have won bass past classics and watch them hold up the trophy and um I, I was telling myself, you know, you're 
one cast away from doing this, and I looked at a few of those and been like, you could have won that one, you could have won that one, but um, it would mean the world to me. It would, uh, it would solidify my career. I mean, I've done, I've done quite a bit. You're right, um, but there's always more, and winning one of these is definitely on everybody's. Um, list and it doesn't matter if it's Kevin Van Dam that's won the most or whatnot. But for me to win my first one, it, it would mean the world. I mean, it's uh, it's it's been a dream of mine just to be at one of these classics. And now that I fished a few, I'm, I'm comfortable with them. Um, and this this weather and this body of water is uh, comfortable to my style. So I feel like I do have a shot at at, uh, at this trophy, and it would uh, just mean the world to me and, and all my sponsors just to hoist that thing at the end of the day. I, I think you have a great opportunity, but let's not talk about this. Let's talk about the big news right now. Camp Mac. Yeah, yeah. Guy Harvey Resort. Absolutely. How unbelievable is that? It's been a long time coming. Camp Mac has always been there, and it's been a, a, a legendary place for giant bass, airboats, and just a good time. Guy Harvey has come aboard now. Um, Guy Harvey Resort. He goes in. He, the, the organization. They've cleaned up all the rooms. They've put new new bedding in all the rooms. They've done new uh, creative ideas to the store. They they're putting in a primitive camping ground. They've redone all the docks. It's gonna. They're they're talking about a restaurant. I mean, that's unbelievable. Everything is there, and I'm telling you, if you've never been, visited Camp Mac before, now is the best time in the world you can rent boats you can go on an airboat ride you can do anything down there if there was ever a time to catch a big bass march april may are the times to do it your, your chance of catching a true trophy catch bass would be right now and camp mac has everything to offer from primitive camping like i said to staying down there they got a cool store we got brand new clothing out some new camp mac guy harvey clothing that is just I can't wait to get them. I, I'm ready to wear them. Um, and what Guy Harvey has done for just the, the outdoor life in general, from yeah. fresh water, now switching over to, not switching over, but moving into salt, fresh water a little bit, and, and uh, the importance of uh, the youth right now. Yeah. The, the, the real grassroots is, um, is a huge player in this industry, and that's what I want to teach. I'm, I'm in my career, I'm 45 years old as of last week, so I want them to have the, the chance that I had when I was a kid also, but 10 times better. Um, between me and, and my wife and, and, and Guy Harvey and Camp Mac, we're going to make that happen for, for everyone. So just check it out. It's the place to be. You have to check it out. Um, you, you will not regret it, I promise. Jacob Wheeler. The man. Oh, I don't know about that. Shut up. I have fun. I get to have a lot of fun. How are you? Very good. You know, we're here at the Bassmasters Classic. Get yes. ready for tournament starting tomorrow. And uh, sort of cool, cool day to sort of to release. We're here at Academy. How'd you get? How did you get here so fast? I, you know, I'm just, I'm just like, I'm everywhere, man. I'm like <laughs> this media place, that media place, freaking rods, like filling up gas, putting oil in the boat. I, I'm just constantly moving. So. What, what, what do you feel like, how, how do you feel this tournament's going to shape up for you? You know, this is the problem with this tournament. They're biting. It's, and, and, it, and it's going to be, they're going to catch them. It's going to be getting a couple of those better quality bites throughout the day. And, I, and it's hard because you could do, I got on a couple patterns throughout the practice. And I would go and I'd fish and I'd fish down through a stretch and I'd catch two or three. And they'd be like little ones, and then you go to another looking stretch that looks exactly like that, catch two or three, and they'd be big. It's just random, like catching one of those couple of four pounders every single day and averaging probably at least, you know, your, your small ones need to be two and a half pounds. Yeah. And that's it to win, you have to have that. You can have a tough day, you can have an 11 to a 13 pound day, but you have to have those 17, 18 pound days to carry you through. You've had a pr pretty successful career. Yeah, I've had, I've had FLW here in the past. This woman who's been practicing. She, she's practicing non-stop, so this is the thing. She's trying to tell me, she's trying to, she's trying to yell at me. She's like, she says, I didn't tie on enough rods for tomorrow. She's mad at me, so she's, she's been non-stop. She's easy, she's right on it. I don't know, it's just part of it. 
day in and day out. It's okay, she thinks she's out to give me her. I want you So you've been successful. <laughs> oh, oh, no, she doesn't, she is not. <laughs> you, you need to stop. <laughs> Hey, you can do this. Now she's she's actually practicing yes. right now. And, I, and so we're sitting here. If you don't, okay, we're good. <laughs> if you don't, heaven forbid, and and we want you to see you win. But it does it. How how big is that having that, hoisting that trophy over your head in terms of your resume of what's going on? You know, right now in the sport, it's sort of a tough. This this event right now is so important because. It's like the last time that's really going to you have all the main guys fishing under one group. Yes. For the most part. And and that's what's tough on me. It's like that's why everybody wants to win this one. I'm not saying this is the last Bass, Bass, Bass Masters Classic that means anything. I'm just saying that this one right here means more than a lot of them, you know, that from past for me. Because it could be my last one. And Kevin could be Kevin's last. Could be Ike's last. Could be the, the legends that I grew up with. Uh, watching those guys could be their last. So like to win with everybody here would mean the world. Yes. Okay. We're here at Academy. Tell us about these. Did you help design these rods? Yeah, so these are these are the I oh, worked with Ducket Ducket Fishing to get uh, a signature series line up of rods. We worked all last year. This year. Um, and finally, they're here. So we have four of my SKUs out of the six that the Academy's gonna be carrying here at the Classic. And uh, the thing is, there's only a select few around. That's the thing. They're not available in stores yet. They will be in April. But the cool thing about these ones right here, I got my, my Citra Series blue. I love that blue, yep. that bright blue. Got a little red in them. And then obviously, of course, the Ducket White. So trying to stay, stay true to my brand, my branding from the get-go, but clean rod, but also functionality, just perfect actions for what I want. You know, I like parabolic rods. I don't like rods that have super, super fast tips most of the time. And this rod right here is like a 7.3, right here's my 7.3 heft. And what it does day in and day out is just having something with a parabolic rod, when you jack them out of some heavy cover, it springs them out of that. So some of those rods, so my flipping rods, like they're parabolic, my topwater rods are a little bit different. Each rod's hand-picked, hand-selected for a specific application. And first time you guys are gonna be, be able to- How much are they? 140 bucks. Oh, so that's in the price range too. $140. I, I, oh, this is the thing. When I designed a rod, I, I didn't want, sometimes rods, be as $300, $400 rods, most of them are overrated. Like you don't need, a crazy out of this world rod to do your job day in and day out. And some of my favorite rods throughout my career have been rods that, that don't work that much, you know? So I wanted to make a rod that was affordable for high school kids, college kids, and then adults alike. It makes sense because I want people to be able to use something that, you know, I have confidence in. I obviously have confidence in this rod right here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be fishing all the time. Yeah. And, you know, but that, that's a big deal to me. Classic question. What are you going to throw this week? It'll probably be one on a crankbait. I seriously probably think it'll be one on a crankbait. There'll be three baits. There's three things I'll, I'll tell you. Lipless, we'll play. DT6, no doubt. And Is the DT6 the bait. blue and yellow or gray and white one? I, I throw a DT6 crankbait. Okay. I throw a DT6 crankbait, I throw a DT6 crankbait a lot. And there's multiple different colors. But I, I think that'll probably be a demon crawl or like a red crawl. Or, or maybe like a chartreuse. The water's a little stained up, so that's gonna be a crank and needle, and guys are recovering water. The only other thing that I will say is lipless crankbaits will play really big this week as well, because like those, that's just the pre-spawn, they're wanting to go, but the water drops and comes up and comes yeah. down, and so I think that'll be another big deal. Awesome. JacobWheelerFishing.com. That's right, Jacob Wheeler Fishing. Wheeler Fishing on YouTube and Instagram, so make sure to check me out. And we gotta have you on the show soon. Hey, let's do it. We can awesome. do it, I'm in. Thank you very much, Jacob Wheeler. Look, did you notice how he gave the, me the look like this? Who farted look just now? <laughs> Kevin Wait, Van Dam. I'm, I'm interview number eight. Yeah. Just cool your jets, Chapman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how are you, dude? Good, good, man. Special week. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a big one, no, no doubt, man. It's, uh, I think this is setting up to be an incredible event all the way around, and then with all the other, uh, you know. Uh, drama with you know 30 some of us 
leaving to fish the Bass Pro Tour and potentially being, you know, our, maybe our last classic, uh, it's it's created that uh, extra pressure too. You know, you want to perform on the big stage, and the classic has been the Super Bowl um, of our sport for a long time, and. Uh, this is this is the one you want to you want to do it at, and Knoxville is setting up to be a, a good fish. Going to be a big, going to be a, a, a big classic. Do you get any emotions thinking of this could be the last one for you? You know, it really hasn't um, bothered me or, or set in to that point yet. I think it'll really be weird next year. Yeah. But for now, I mean, you know, I'm enjoying the moment, trying to trying to do, you know, put together my get best game plan. I've been been sitting here, I've worked on my tackle, I've done all that, and I finally I figured out the secret bait. I got the magic bait They're right here. It's Uncle Uncle <laughs> there, Buck's gummy worm. There it is. And you know, we've got a multi in the red tail. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's the it's the orange and chartreuse tail. I think that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna, that's be, gonna be it. That's, that's gonna be the one. That's it. <laughs> How great! Yeah, four classic wins. <laughs> Tons, seven what? Saying seven Angler of the Year awards. Possibly the last one hoisting that that trophy on Sunday. Does it go through your mind and it does it make you? Does it? Put, how much pressure does it put on you? I I put a ton on myself no matter what. Um, you know I just really think that uh, you know the classics a different animal. You have to have a different game plan, and I look at it that way. I've had that experience, and I think. For, for somebody like myself that, that really helps um, in that game plan. So I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, I think it's, uh, this is one that sets up for my style of fishing. It's a mm -hmm. pattern type lake. And uh, God, if I can just keep up with the changing conditions and execute, it kind of works like into it. it kind of works into your the way you like to fish as a power fishing. It's going to be crankbait. It's going to be maybe even spinner bait. Yeah, you can make um, you know this fishery will, can should fit just about everybody's uh, strengths here. I mean, if you if you like to if you like to crank, you can crank. You can throw jerk bait. You can throw spinner bait. You can flip. Um, you know, you can fish about any way you you really want here. And it's got small mouth and large mouth, so um, I'm excited about it. It's it's going to be a good week. Uh, uh, you know, nice warm day today. I mean, how perfect is the weather today? We got, a, we got a front coming today. Today would be a great day to be uh, to be fishing. Tomorrow, tomorrow should be really good too. Off. Now, this is off the wall question. You don't have a You don't win. I want to see you win. You know. You know. I'm one of the biggest fans of you of all time. A little crazy at times. But uh, how bad it would stink to work the expo next year? <laughs> yeah. You know. I'm. I'm really, uh, really excited for, for this one this week, and definitely um, maybe you know, not I looking. Enjoy, I enjoy doing the shows and, and doing the fans and things like that. So I do a lot of that. Always have, and uh, it'll be it'll be different though for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Change isn't the worst thing. We have to remember that. Yeah, what you're yeah. doing it at yeah. it's been, MLF uh, it's is been wonderful. Really good. It's been really good for for all fishermen. You yeah. Know, there's a lot of positive vibe right now. Um, a lot of lot of interest in fishing. A lot of extra exposure. Absolutely. A ton of ton of coverage for fans. It's uh, it's it's it's, it's actually very good. Everybody's doing a better job. Yes. You hit that one on the head there. Okay. The greatest of all time, Kevin Van Dam, my boy, my Michigan boy. Gotta have it. Yep. Good luck. Thanks. Man. Thank you, dude. Well, media day is done. And so are we. We're tired, exhausted, and now we have to go over to a... Everything with me is like it's uphill. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go from here to, where are we going? The Scott. Expo at Academy. Yes. Or the boat land, we'll see where that is first. So, if we don't do any video from then, thanks for watching. Please make, you, make sure you subscribe, hit the comment button, hit like, do all that stuff. Take it fishing. And Les should say it now. Get your fish on! There you go. It, as he's dying. Media Day Classic 2019 Knoxville, Tennessee. Thank you.